nine after the number of Merlin 1D engines at the base of the rocket. Now, Get Chilla started. What you can see in that foggy view on your screen are the four key parts that make up the rocket. The first uh, is the, the first and second stage, as well as the inner stage in between, as well as the fairing at the very top of the rocket. Now the first stage is the bottom two thirds of the vehicle that you can barely make out there. And that's what we refer to as the booster. Those nine Merlin engines do the bulk of the work to get Falcon 9 off the ground and up to the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. For today's mission, it will be flying a southern trajectory along Florida's eastern coast, which may make it flight visible from the ground there. At about two and a half minutes into flight, it will separate and make its way back stage down one, to- RP1 load complete. Back down to Earth. We did just finish stage one fuel loading. And again, uh, the, the first and second stages will separate with the first stage targeting a landing back on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Now, for those of you keeping track, today's mission does mark the seventh flight for this particular booster. And on top of the first stage is the black carbon fiber inner stage, which connects the two stages and houses the pneumatic pushers that allow the first and second stage to separate during flight. Then on top of the inner stage is the second stage, which will take the 40 spacecraft to their eventual destination in orbit. You may want to watch the velocity gauge that'll show up on the bottom left of your screen to see how fast we're going when stage one separates and then how fast when we shut down stage two. You'll see that stage two actually contributes more velocity than the first stage. Now, right now, the spacecraft are enclosed inside the large nose cone at the top of the rocket. This is called the fairing. The fairing's job is to protect the payload inside until the vehicle is outside the Earth's atmosphere, at which point the fairing halves will separate to expose the satellites to space. Now, today, we're flying a new fairing, which you may, might be able to tell as it's much Thanks cleaner for for a strong back retract. than the sooty first stage, which has flown many times before. We are currently just about T minus four and a half minutes from liftoff. The vehicle is healthy and we're currently working, no issues. You may have heard that we finished stage one and stage two RP1 loading and stage one liquid oxygen loading. We'll finish a little over a minute from now at T minus three strong minutes. Strong back retract has started. Heard the call out that the strong back uh, has begun retraction of the transporter erector. You can see those clamp arms below the fairing opening there to allow the transporter erector strong back to pull slightly away from the Falcon 9. Now again, the transporter erector is the structure that provides liquids, gases, electrical connections to the second stage, as well as air conditioning to the payload fairing. You might be able to hear the pops and hissing sounds, and that is from propellant loading as well as the launch mount and strong back that the propellant is going through. You can see that strong back slowly reclining there from the Falcon 9. As a reminder, you're watching the webcast for Transporter 4, which is our fourth dedicated rideshare mission to date. The payloads continue to look healthy. The Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket. We should be finishing stage one liquid oxygen. Stage one locks load complete. There it is. We just finished stage one liquid oxygen loading. And in about a minute here, the stage two liquid oxygen should wrap up as well. We do load liquid oxygen in as late as possible so we can keep it as cold as possible so we can load more of it into the booster. might be able to hear that it is a busy morning here on the factory floor here in Hawthorne, California. About 10 seconds from the end of stage two liquid oxygen.
stage two lock load complete. There's the call out for finishing up liquid oxygen loading. Those white clouds that you see coming from the booster are venting from the transporter director liquid oxygen line there on your right. That's totally normal and expected. In about 30 seconds here at T minus one minute. Yeah, closeouts have started. At T minus one minute, Falcon 9 will be in startup. The first and second stages will begin pressurizing for launch, and the internal flight computers will have taken control of the countdown. Falcon 9 is in startup. Falcon 9, Transporter 4, LD is go for launch. LD has given that final go for launch. All systems are go. Let's watch Falcon 9 lift off. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Mission and lift off of Transporter 4. Pitching down range. Stage 1, chamber pressure is nominal. We're at T plus 40 seconds. Awesome views from Falcon 9 punching through the clouds. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower and we're currently throttling down in preparation for max Q at T plus one minute and 12 seconds. This is where the stage will experience the maximum aerodynamic pressure. Max Q. There's max Q. Everything is looking good with stage one trajectory. Beautiful view of the clouds in the background there. In just about a minute, we will have three events coming up in pretty quick succession. There's Miko, which is main engine cutoff, stage separation, which is when the first and second stages separate an SES-1 where that single MVAC engine on the second stage will ignite, carrying... Start of MVAC engine chill. You heard the call out for the start of that MVAC engine chill prior getting ready for that second engine start of. Really cool plumes from Falcon 9. We're under 30 seconds to main engine cutoff. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. <laughs> MVAC ignition. There you heard and saw this. Three events happen back to back. Main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine startup one. You can see those grid fins deploying on the first stage there. In just a few seconds, we should have fairing. fairing. Separation confirmed. There's that confirmation of fairing separation.
You can see the two fairing halves have separated from the vehicle, exposing the 40 spacecraft to the vacuum of space. Now, today's mission marks the first flight for both of those fairing halves, and we will be attempting to recover those in the, from the water once they fall back down to Earth. Now, we're currently in our first of three MVAC burns. Now, this first burn should last until about T plus 10 minutes. And the next milestones will be the first stage booster's entry burn. So Falcon 9 executes an entry burn to slow itself down before hitting the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Without this entry burn, relying on just the atmosphere to slow down Falcon 9 would put unnecessary strain on the rocket's structure. Vehicle is following a nominal trajectory. The Transporter 4 mission, again, is SpaceX's fourth dedicated SmallSat rideshare program mission and the 12th mission of 2022. SpaceX is targeting at least three dedicated rideshare flights to sun-synchronous orbit per year. And we also offer opportunities to ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch every couple weeks or so. Small sats can ride to space on SpaceX's Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, as well as Starship in the not-too-distant future. You can see on those live views from the first stage on your left that Falcon 9 is equipped with four hypersonic grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage, and stage one is using these grid fins for steering as it makes its way back down to Earth. Second stage is looking good on the right there in the middle of its first burn, the first of three burns. Those white puffs of gas that you may occasionally see from this first stage are from the, from the attitude control system, and those are nitrogen gas. That's nitrogen gas that's coming out and helps with attitude control of the first stage as it makes its way back down to Earth. Stage two FTS is safe. We're about three minutes from the start of our stage one entry burn. Again, this is a three engine burn and there are three engines in a row on the first stage, which will light up to slow the vehicle down as it enters the upper parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Vehicle continues to follow a nominal trajectory. If you are just joining us, we did have a successful liftoff of the Transporter 4 mission, which is SpaceX's fourth dedicated small sat rideshare mission and 12th mission of 2022. On your screen are live views from the first and second stage, with the first stage making its way back down towards the Atlantic Ocean to land on our drone ship, just read the instructions, and the second stage on your right in the first of three planned MVAC burns. about two minutes from the start of that stage one entry burn, which is about a 20 second burn that slows that first stage down as it enters the Earth's atmosphere. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. Now for today's mission, the stage one landing burn will follow under a minute after the end of our stage one entry burn. And that'll land the first stage on our drone ship, just read the instructions. And to put the deceleration of the landing burn into perspective, Around 60 minutes or 60 seconds away from landing, the first stage is moving about 2,000 miles per hour. Then in less than a minute, we'll rapidly reduce speed in order to prep for landing, and the first stage slows down to just about 87 miles per hour when the landing legs deploy just prior to landing. The Falcon 9 first stage is equipped with four landing legs made out of carbon fiber with aluminum honeycomb and they're placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket, and they'll deploy just prior to landing. We're 
under 30 seconds to the start of that stage one entry burn. It's a really cool view of the Atlantic Ocean from the first stage on your left. Stage one entry burn start up. It's the start of the stage one entry burn. Stage one entry burn shut down. Did have a successful stage one entry burn. And as I mentioned earlier, we will be attempting to recover stage this. Stage one FTS escaped. Recover this booster for the seventh time today on our drone ship. Just read the instructions. Stage the, one transonic. The first stage has just one more burn left. Come on, guidance. That's the landing burn. We'll be starting here in just a few seconds. And at the same time, the second engine, uh, the MVAC, will actually shut off at the same time as the start of that landing burn. Stage one landing burn. Seco one. There's second engine cutoff one, and you heard that we did start our stage one landing burn. This is about a 20 second burn of the stage single, one. single Not engine. Insertion. See, we did have a successful landing of our first stage, as well as a confirmation of a nominal second stage orbit in the middle there. Now, now coming up in about five minutes, we are expecting the start of the deployment sequence. There will be 20 deployments of 40 spacecraft, which will occur over a 73-minute period of time. Now, this includes CubeSats, Microsats, PicoSats, non-deploying hosted payloads, and an orbital transfer vehicle carrying spacecraft to be deployed at a later time. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the webcast, due to the lack of the ground station coverage at times, we expect only a handful of our deployments will be visible today. However, we do expect to have telemetry and hear audio confirmation over the nets when in range of ground stations. Now again, to see the full list of deployments for all 40 satellites on today's mission, head over to SpaceX.com. With that said, the first three payload deployments are going to happen during a blackout period where we will lose live camera views and telemetry. There is a possible blackout period when we plan to relight the MVAC engine on the second stage for its second burn at about T plus 28 minutes into flight. Because all critical data is stored and forwarded, we will confirm deployment of the first three payloads once we regain ground station coverage in the Maldives around the T plus 57 minute mark. For now, we're going to take a short break during this blackout period, and we'll leave you with the animation of where we are during this time. If we are able to regain coverage for the relight of our second stage engine, we will come back with live views and confirm on screen. But if not, we'll see you back here in about 40 minutes. 